it's still before lunch time. I will okay. try to make it less than 20. Uh, which I think it will uh, very fast. So I will maybe take about 25 minutes. And maybe that the discussion, I think we can just take to the uh, lunch period. So uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about this request by uh, this symposium, uh, interaction between robotics and the haptics. So my title is rather ambitious. From robotics to haptics, from haptics to robotics. Very ambitious, right? So I will just narrow down to these specific applications. So this is something we want to attain, and which is actually assigned by a big project uh, led by uh, Dr. Bong Jae, who discussed about this project yesterday. Uh, essentially, that we have uh, this uh, multi-user remote, remotely located, and uh, uh, this is this is my view. This is my hand. This is others' hand. This is. This is others' view. Now you can see that the nice hand is my hand, also a bad hand is, is others', view, uh, others hand. So then, the, uh, not only that we are just touching, but the, we want to manipulate something. So like uh, this kind of pain or test, which is uh, known to be a difficult to obtain. So then, once we uh, were assigned this task, we confronted with two problems. First. Now you can see that the, we need to use the fingers. There is no finger-based haptic device we can use, commercialized one, to do this kind of task. Okay? Second, uh, now it's uh, remote users, so then there will be a time delay. One of the most powerful techniques to address time delay is the passivity-based techniques in telerobotics. Okay? However, this passivity-based telerobotics techniques implicitly assume that the robot or open loop system is passive or energy conserving. Okay? Of course, if the real robot is energy conserving, however, if we, so when we try to utilize uh, open source simulator like Bullet, ODE, Vortex, or Gazeb or Vlab, they really do not enforce this password. Okay? So then we cannot really use uh, these password based techniques for telerobotics then we need to build this simulation or a passive, passively based haptic render. Okay? So then, now it's, uh, it's now we have, we, so uh, what I want to say today is a loop. Okay? In order to devise this kind of, uh, 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 in order to build this kind of haptic device, we found that the, we need to use uh, many techniques from robotics. And one of them is uh, uh, sensor fusion. And maybe that the pinnacle of uh, this sensor fusion technique would be SLAM. Okay? So then what I want to propose or what I want to say is that this kind of uh, hot techniques in robotics can be very useful when we do research, uh, uh, particular device building for these haptics. Okay? And also, if we build a passivity based uh, haptic rendering, it turns out that it is a very nice property which we can utilize to build best, stable, and accurate robot simulator whose importance is never, never removed at this moment because now we all know that the machine learning requires lots of data. Real experiments may be too cumbersome, too costly, or too dangerous, right? For those kind of cases, then we need to have uh, this kind of simulator. They should be accurate to do a transition from simulation to the real world. And also fast, because so you, you remember this so Google experiments is just picking. See, pick, see, pick. Do you know that the, how many trials uh, did they do? 800,000. Right? So then the only a 20% speed up will make a huge difference. Okay? So then, now we were, uh, so then the people were really delving into uh, these two uh, technical topics. Let me just uh, briefly introduce myself. So this is me, my students. And as I discussed yesterday, that my lab is the interactive and network robotics lab. The interaction they have uh, haptics, tether robotics, even robot robot interaction, robot environment interaction. Actually, it can do it, it can uh, incorporate anything. So then, the, uh, my background is a uh, mechanics and control. So my whole research are rooted on this mechanics and control, and I uh, uh, utilize those kind of methodologies and techniques 
this mechanics and control to this kind of various fields. So first is uh, aerial manipulation, and second is autonomous mobility, autonomous flying, autonomous driving, and so on and so forth. Actually, uh, my research career started as a researcher working on telerobotics. And later on, as Juan said, there is a strong connection from telerobotics to haptics. So I moved to haptics and a little bit of a VR, and also do uh, some, some, some uh, 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 collaboration uh, projects with uh, industrial partners. Okay. And uh, we have uh, this website, and also we have uh, this uh, YouTube channel. You can also check, we have uh, several uh, movies. So then, let me just go back again. Okay. So then, first, device problem. Okay. This is a stereo one. Okay. So perhaps the best, uh, bestly known, uh, widely well known uh, uh, device is uh, this Oculus Touch. Okay. Now you can see that this is a controller. If you use this kind of controller, what you can do in virtual reality is doing something like this. Not really feel, not really interesting, not really rich, not really fun. Okay? So then we cannot really use this kind of a touch, so this kind of a, uh, a device. And this is the Dex mode from Dextra Robotics. Okay? And now it, it has some similarity uh, with the uh, haptic device that Dr. Bomji you showed uh, yesterday. But anyway, essentially that it has uh, this kind of exoskeletal kind of uh, a structure to measure its uh, uh, finger position and provide uh, this uh, uh, happy feedback. However, in many cases, it's just one little thing. Okay. However, manipulation, for example, if I want to do this kind of things, we need to have a three degree freedom, fingertip force feedback, one normal and two position. We need to have a this three degree freedom force feedback. For the tracking, this is uh, this year's CVPR results. Most up to date, using monocular camera, not working yet. It, it, it may seem not working well, however, now soon, speed up, okay. Not really following these fingers because now this camera is fundamentally inherently not really robust against environmental image, lighting, and so on and so forth, and also occlusion. Another is we, uh, many of us uh, actually use this lip motion. Lip motion uses RGBD camera. Camera fundamentally inherently uh, uh, limited with this problem of occlusion. Okay. So then now because we do not have uh, this kind of a device available, so we just decide to build them uh, by ourselves. Okay. So this is our device. Okay. Uh, this device consists of a. Uh, 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 hand tracking module and the haptic feedback module. Hand tracking module has this kind of glove, and now you can see that it has an IMU and then it has a soft sensor. So one, 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 one topic I also want to discuss today is the soft robots for uh, haptic application, but uh, due to this time limitation, I cannot really discuss about that. But we have uh, this kind of structure. So what is IMU? Inertial measurement unit, which we have in the phone. It allows us to measure this three degree freedom angle, right? So then the, now we have IMU on palm to measure its rotation. Index finger. Index finger is not really a simple motion. It has this kind of motion as well. And also thumb. Thumb is a very, very complicated. Actually, it doesn't have this colliding intersection, uh, intersecting axis. Actually, it has a weird uh, configuration of this axis, and this motion is very complicated, right? So then, if we, anyway, use this IMU, then we can track this 3D freedom angle, okay? This motion, this motion, 1D. We just use a soft sensor, okay? So then the now, you can see that the, so one of the key, key, key problem, whenever we use this IMU for finger tracking is compass problem. It uses this magnetometer. If we have a big steel structure, or inside and outside, is 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 property of our chain. Not really robust. However, that the if uh, uh, working area is not very really large, then uh, it just uh, 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 passed up here. So again here, uh, here and you. And in order to calibrate this uh, compass, on this three step one, two, three, then it is working. Now you can see you can see that the uh, we have. Uh, 
uh, this guy has uh, his hand on the screen. Okay? So then, now this is a tracking and haptic feedback to provide the speed of freedom for speed back to the fingertip. We use uh, this kind of uh, system. So it has uh, this uh, wire, this is uh, it's, uh, maybe tendon driven or wire driven system. Wire driven with the spring to uh, uh, prevent the collapse. And then the, now it has a, this a force plate. So then the, by using these three wires, we can control this orientation and also normal force as well. Then to in, improve the robustness, we use uh, uh, measurements for this feedback. So we use uh, this FSL sensor to measure the pressure. And also in the beginning, we try to use IMU to measure its orientation because IMU can allow us to measure its orientation. However, these three are motors. This motor produces a lot of electromagnetic noise. It just kills magnet okay. So that's why that now instead of using this IMU, we use these soft sensors to measure displacement of this wire or motion of this uh, this this this, this force plate. Okay. So then now you can see that it provides this kind of a uh, uh, directional force feedback, and if you touch this body or a different curvature, then you will be able to uh, uh, perceive it. And, and I think that this was demonstrating uh, world records about uh, what, one or two years ago, and also in okay. So then, now this is a device. So then, now you can see that here, one of the key techniques is IMU sensor fusion. IMU sensor fusion is uh, one of the uh, very important techniques in robotics. HMD. One of the key breakthrough comes from actually from this IMU. Hand tracking. Hand tracking is very precise, and you can just change this view, and it may reduce this dizziness, although not hundred percent <coughs> completely. We have uh, this kind of motion uh, 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 tracking system without really using this camera. And actually, we use this IMU because this IMU is a part of our whole technologies for these drones. In order to control drones, it's utterly important to estimate correctly and quickly its rotation. So this is our uh, own build. This, you may be able to see that it's a little bit different. So this is uh, omnidirectional area robots where we use this IMU to measure its rotation. And this is something I promised yesterday. Asla dragon, small scale dragon, <laughs> small scale dragon. Okay. Each week attitude is measured by eye. Okay, and the autonomous flying. Then you can see that the uh, does it look like a dragon? A small dragon. We can put a lot of a lot more limbs it's because it's a scale. <coughs> Maybe with the limb and then the other part. Maybe. And the, the size is about this big. And uh, it's wiggly, and at the end, in order to show that this wiggling motion is intentional, uh, okay. it's also a very, uh, okay. So, okay, go down, go down, okay, quite precise, right? There is another technique which is also based on sensor vision, which I will not discuss today. Uh, that will be presented in this ECRA 2019 this year. Okay. So then, not only that this uh, robotics can help haptics, haptics also can help robotics, particularly for our case to you know, so set up the device specification. Okay, IMU here, three dollars, chip sensors, impossible. It's not really a, a reasonable to ask. Perfect tracking, okay? then there will be always error. So then how much that error would be okay? So this is uh, something we found. Uh, results is three centimeters. So if we just uh, track our finger position, and if, our, if my finger is here, if Abat finger is here, just imagine, my finger is here, Abat finger is here, but the, so I'm here, but Abat finger is here, we would be able to immediately think that this is not really my finger, right? What I found is that if there is no cutaneous haptic feedback, if there is about 1.5 centimeters difference, then people start to think that, oh, it may be not really my finger. 
However, if we have this avatar, although is, there is some error between the real, uh, real finger and the avatar, however, if we just put the haptic feedback on this uh, avatar finger, what we found is that we can actually increase this 1.5 centimeters to 3 centimeters. And that means that the, we, you can use uh, chip sensors, however, with the haptic feedback, it would be possibly necessary to set a specification, tracking uh, accuracy less than 3, three cm. If there is no haptic feedback, it should be less than 1.5 cm. Okay? Okay, so then, currently what we are interested in is mobile haptics, which will be particularly, I think, that the powerful when combined with AR, augmented reality. Then what we need is then not only track its uh, orientation, we also need to track its position. It's actually a localization problem. Okay? Or, or actually a slam problem. Okay? What is that though we have uh, this kind of measures? So it's a VINS plus VINS, v, VIN GPS. VIN means visual inertial navigation. That means that we use uh, this monocular camera. But monocular camera does not provide us scale information, depth information. Then we use uh, this IMU because it has uh, this accelerometer. Then pro combining this, then that is called us v, VIN slam. But we also incorporate this GPS. And uh, now this allows us to have a uh, capability which is not really, uh, which is not uh, uh, generally obtained by other uh, groups. That is actually indoor, outdoor, seamless transition. Outdoor, it just uses GPS and camera together. GPS and camera, the GPS area is about one or five centimeters, uh, uh, five meters. But if we use this camera, we can actually reduce it around maybe 20 centimeters, much better. And the transition, when it gets transition, GPS signal gets very messy. Here the, the key uh, innovation is automatically decide to uh, decide uh, uh, to rely which one, GPS more or camera more, okay? So then the outside more GPS messy, so then the kind of using both of them, however GPS get too drifted, so then they use this camera and then go inside and outside. So this is a reader, so this is just handheld navigation, just like this, and walking. This is a, a engineering building of a Seoul National University. It's outside, it's inside. Oh. Okay, so that's gone. So this is actually a, a outdoor to indoor fly, drone fly, which will be very important for delivery, okay? delivery that outside to inside. And now you can see that now outside, and this is camera view, Inside, so then the from here to here, red is GPS. GPS is kind of okay, it uh, is okay. But when it gets inside, indoor, now you can see that it's just drifting. However, we can still, let's just go again. We can still maintain the map and the maintain the localization within this building. And also from outside and inside and transition. Okay? So I think that the we all use five tracker, right? Many of us use five tracker, right? In this uh, Asian haptics, we had a serious problem because one guy used a bike, a bike tracker, I am using bike tracker, my camera, my, 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 my camera and their camera interfere with each other. Okay? If we use this kind of technique, then the, that will be kind of a one step ahead as compared to our current uh, 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 practice. Okay? So then, now let us discuss about the simulation. Okay, we want to obtain passivity based simulation or passivity enforcing simulation, which, anyway, for which, anyway, however, the Edward Foley provide a negative answer around 1990. Okay? We come up with an idea to uh, circumvent that kind of issue. So then the, now we use, uh, we, we, we again obtain this uh, passivity enforcing simulation. Then now let us see what's going on with the currently used open loop simulator which does not enforce passivity. Okay? So this is a vortex. So vortex is considered to be best among this open loop simulator at the moment. Okay? This is a Fukan with the, this joint top gain to be very large. Now you can see that the, it just goes on zero. 
this is a bullet. It's a very light uh, uh, bolt. Okay? Then instead of being stabilized, it's just behaving like this, like a pump. Okay? This kind of thing should never happen in real world. Right? However steep spring is, however light bolt is, they should be stable. That is because they are energy conserving. However, this open loop simulator, okay, or another uh, uh, open loop simulator, does not enforce this principle. So, if you just write down this continuous time dynamic equation, if you discretize it, you will lose this. Okay? So that, that's why that we have this kind of issue. Another issue is this multi-point contact. Okay? Contact is very complicated. So then now you can see that if you really use this bullet, then it's just shaking. And this is uh, OpenAI with Mujoko, which is funded by Elon Musk. Right? Even in their promotional video, this box is penetrating into the thing. Okay? So yeah, now these two things we want to address. That's why then we come up with this idea of our passive Bitcoin integration. So instead of writing down equation, continuous time, discretizing, we just starting from passive principle in discrete time and directly derive integrated from there. Okay. This, it is so called, uh, uh, it is similar to this so called geometric integrator. So that now it's a passive with this contact as well. So then the now, because it's a passive, however, however light, however stiff, simulation will be stable. Contact. So now this is a, so this is a box. And now if we just plug this energy, then what you can see is that the energy is constant, jump down, jump down, jump down. And this jump down is when it has this kind of a relative motion with, with the ground, which has this friction. Contact is passive, so that this kind of a shaking grasping will not happen. Okay? This is passive regardless of uh, integration time. Like a car company, they have uh, this uh, collision simulation. It has uh, lots of meshes. And in order to solve this problem in a reasonable, reasonably short period of time, they use so called explicit integrator. They cannot really make a delta t to be small enough. Because the delta t to be small, it will be very slow. Delta t is large, it just becomes massive. It cannot really happen here because passive is invariant against dt, and so on and so forth. Okay? So then, passive happy rendering, now we apply it to robotics. This, maybe, let me just choose this. It's a tendon driven hand. Why people, are tendon -driven, uh, why people are using tendon driven hand <coughs> is because it, now this hand is very light, finger is very light. However, tendon is, tendon is very stiff. It's a system which is very difficult to simulate. Now you can see that it's very stably simulated. And then this aluminum beam with the very low frequency and high frequency together, stable. Okay? Then, what we are currently doing is this. Okay. Experimentally verified. Okay. For this, that we use this data driven technique, which is similar to uh, Saki. Uh, so then, now it's a tolerance is a 0 0.065 millimeters. It's very tight. But now you can see that the, it's quite well matched uh, results with the real experiments. So how could we? Uh, so then, now this is a state of art, and also by the way. This simulation is real time. Okay, so that's the key. If we just put the real time, put the, this op open source simulator real time for the same scenario, what we attain is something like this vortex, hit, unstable, just gone. ODE and bullet, two chatter, too much chattering, you cannot really, uh, uh, one cannot really do this kind of hanging like this. Okay, so then, However, we could achieve this kind of nice performance, so how we could do this? We use this data-driven approach, particularly data-driven contact clustering. Contact solving consists of three parts. First is just to compute which kind of point is in the contact region. However, number of points and number of directions may be too large, impossible to solve in real time. Then needs to be clustering. People use k-means clustering, or people use uh, 
manually tune. And once it reduces it, then we will tensor it. This reduction, clustering, is kind of a remote art. Requires experience, difficult to define, very good problem for machine learning. So we use this MLP network to run this. To, to attain this kind of features. Eight? Eight? So then, that's a fusion, slam, two device, robot haptic rendering, two robot simulator. So we are not really isolated, I per se. So we so there is a, there can be a much stronger interaction and uh, interplay between robotics and uh, 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 haptics, I think. And this is students, and I think that this video is fun. <laughs> So, so what's, the, what's the purpose in here, like making uh, mobile? So there is a two purpose. So first purpose is for entertainment. So do you remember that uh, uh, in uh, in Winter Olympic in Pyeongchang, they use uh, one thousand something drones. They are all dots. If you just see closely, that one is falling down, one is shaking, and so on and so forth. Now we can just fly this kind of scale, real, 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 real dragon. And second. We will put this on under the helicopter. Then helicopter will have a very long arm. Also, it's a very light. It's a on, it's, a, it's a about the four kilogram, four thing here. So then, the, if you have a, like a twenty meters arm, very light, you can just put it on the helicopter. And then, the, if so, for example, if there is fire for the building which is higher than forty stories, there is no solution. What they do is just helicopter with this kind of a bucket and just and that's it. However, if you use this kind of thing, then we actually compute whether it's possible. We actually put the, uh, this uh, this uh, firefighting force and we can do this kind of precision pointing. Then the, maybe that the, this uh, this performance can be uh, uh, much improved, and then there can be a more. Uh, Okay, so then let's go for lunch then. Thank you.